Look at Romans chapter 1 verse 27. Romans chapter 1 verse 27. And likewise also the men living the natural use of the woman born in their laws one toward another. Men with men walking that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. Dealing with homosexuality. Now look at verse 26. Please pay attention. Verse 26 of that same Romans chapter 1. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. God gave them up. So what exactly are we discussing here? Look at verse 24. The pretext of that Romans chapter 1. Romans 1 24 wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves through the loss of their own hearts then look at that Romans chapter 1 verse 28 the post text Romans 1 28 and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now, if you read that, you will think God just did hand them over to a reprobate mind. But it was not God that handed them over to a reprobate mind. That's a metonymy. It's a figure of speech that was used to communicate those thoughts that we just read in Romans chapter 1. It's because they did not retain God. So since they didn't retain God in their hearts, God did nothing. Because God cannot force you. So they didn't retain God. God did nothing. God's inactivity is attributed as God gave them over to a reprobate mind. I don't know if you understand at all. The inactivity, because God can't force you. Since man refused to retain God, God can do nothing. The inactivity of God is seen as God handing them over to a reprobate mind. Is it clear here? All right. That's a metonymy. It's a figure of speech. And that figure of speech was used in writing many of the Old Testament scriptures. Many of the Old Testament scriptures. All right? A man is judged because God is not involved. What we call the judgment of God is the, in, the lack of God's involvement in the choice of man. Lack, God's lack of involvement in man's choice is what is called the judgment of God. That is why we say that the word wrath of God is man-made. The wrath of God because there's no wrath in God. So the wrath of God is man-made. Because the wrath of God simply is the inactivity of God in the choice of man. Because God forces nobody. Men are free moral agents. So when you make the choice, God stands aloof. That God standing aloof allows you to be consumed by the outcome of your choice. That outcome of your choice consuming you is attributed as the wrath of God. Meaning that the wrath of God is man-made. Yeah, it's man-made because God says, hey young man, good, evil. Evil will destroy you. Good will build you up. I advise you, choose good. Anyways, the choice ultimately is yours. And God walks away. You choose evil. And evil is consuming you. Men call that the wrath of God. Why? Because God cannot come and say, Hey, hey, didn't I say you should know? You made the choice. You live with the choice. That's why if you remember, I taught you that God can love you to hell. Going to hell is the love of God. Oh no, why are you looking at me like that? Have you gone home? <laughs> Going to hell is the love of God. Why? Love does not insist on his own. God cannot insist on his own because he is love. 
God is love and love does not insist on his own. So since he is love and does not insist on his own, you decide to go to that direction. He can't interfere because he is love and he loves you. So he allows you to go the way you have chosen to go. So if you want to go to hell, he will love you to hell. The choice is yours. You know, he said to Adam, let's use, let's use, let's use Moses' uh, metaphors. Tree of life, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Boy, the day you eat of this one, you will surely die. That one, eat all of it. This one, kill her inside. See you later. Adam goes to eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God was not absent. God was watching. He saw it. He allowed him because he loves him. The man eats. The man dies. God shows up. Adam, where are thou? It's not like he doesn't know where he was. It was a rhetoric question. Where are thou? Because there's somewhere you're supposed to be. You have left the place. He said, oh, the woman you gave me. But the guy has already died. And God will do nothing about the death instantly. So God says, all right. Even though you have rebelled against me, in my mercy, the seed of the woman is going to come. And he will bruise the head of the serpent. But he allowed man to make the choice and live with the outcome of his choice. And in his mercy, he prepares a remedy for man's choice, you know, that will remedy man ultimately at, at the end of time. That's God's love. Now, God leaving man to live with the result of his choice is called the wrath of God. It's a metonymy. It's a figure of speech. So everywhere you hear wrath of God in the Bible is actually the inactivity of God. If that's clear, can I hear a powerful amen? amen? 